Hi and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at designing a USB stick using their main feature of Revolve in Fusion 360. If you like a copy of the final model, okay, please check the link in the description. And what we'll do now is jump into Fusion to start a design. Another way of creating a design in Fusion for your USB is to create a Revolve. So a revolve will take half of a shape and spin that around an axis. So this is how you would do sort of a vase sort of shape or a cylindrical shape. Okay, or one method of doing that. So I'm just going to show you a very quick design using this technique. So I'm going to go to sketch first. And I'm going to sketch on this top plane here. I'm just going to spin around the design so I can see it. Zooming in, in and out with my middle mouse wheel until I've got a good view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a design using circles. And I'm going to draw this circle to start with. Now, it, it needs to be quite big in terms of its size and dimensions because I don't want to dimension it there because the lid is not going to fit into it. So I do need to drag this out and I'm going to type in 25. So I've got this uh, design here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rectangular pattern and select this circle. I'm going to drag this out because I want three. And the space is fine, 40 millimeters between each one, because that's going to cover all of this design. But if I bring it back maybe slightly, actually, I'm just thinking of this distance between here, 38 is fine. Might come in here actually and change that by double clicking on the dimension, and just update that to 26. So I've got this design. Now you've seen previously, if I do this and go to extrude, and select each part of this sketch, like that, and go join, I can then start creating this body. But it's a very sort of flat geometric shape. So that has some limitations. So what I'm going to do again is this time, if you're going to draw a center line, I'm going to use this point here, so the center of all the origins, just to draw a center line going across. Click escape or click the green tick. And this time, instead of extrude, I'm going to click revolve. So that's up here or down here. So the profile to revolve, I'm going to select one half. Now I'm going to select the top sort of section. You could select the bottom. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to select that. The axis is that line I've just drawn. And it wants to cut away. And now I don't want it to cut. I want it to create a new component. And I click OK. So what I've got here is basically three balls of, of three spheres that are connected together. And inside there, I've got my circuit board. So what I want to do, as I've done previously in some of the other videos, is I'm going to go to combine, and I'm going to subtract the circuit, okay, away from this body I've created. So the target body is this, the tools is the circuit. I want to cut it, and I want to keep the tool. I'm going to click OK. Now while I'm here, I'm going to right click on the USB and turn it into a component. That'll just make things a little bit easier. Now, what I've got is this has been subtracted from the inside. So, the way I can show you that is to go to section analysis, choose a plane, and you can sort of see by this cross section here, okay, I have subtracted. That object away from it become a bit more clear later on so i'm just going to click cancel and i'm going to activate this component here i'm going to rename that main body click enter i'm going to activate this by clicking on this dot here so the only thing i'm working on now is this main body so in the background Okay, is the USB, but I'm not going to affect any of that. 
So what I'm going to do is going to go sketch and I'm going to create the lid. So I'm going to create a sketch on that bottom plane or top plane. And now you look at it. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to hover over here and I can see that I've got these three bodies. Nat a natural position for the lid might be across there. But depending on my sketch I did originally, okay, I may have not positioned that. So we'll have a look at where the lid's going to go. So I'm going to come into here. I'm going to turn off this body here and I can see the USB. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge here and press P for project, and that's also in here. And I only want to project that particular entity or line. I'm going to click OK. I'm now going to turn back on my body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to solid and I'm going to go split body, which is there and here. So the body to split is the body I've created. The tool is that little line there. Now, if I don't have this ticked, it will only cut a little slot into it like that. And for this design, I don't want that. I want it to sort of extend through the body. And I can go like that. OK, tick that box and it'll cut right through. Click OK. So what you'll see now, it's created a cap. So we go into this main body, on this main body component, should I say, and go into bodies here. I've now got cap and this body. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to hide that cap or that lid. And I'll double click and rename that lid. And I'll rename this sort of, what can I call this? So I've got lid and I'm going to go, uh, what can I call this? Main body two. Okay, just be careful when you're wording or naming things. Might rename that later, but here we go. So I've got this. USB just stuck inside this main body. Now I could 3D print that and it'll have a slot to allow this circuit board just to slide in. I could put a bit of glue or adhesive on it and slide it in. However, that is a it's a very simple way of doing it. And if I wanted to take this apart for recycling or to repair it, then that's going to be a little bit difficult if I'd glued that in. So we want to avoid using glues and adhesive. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split this, okay, into two separate bodies. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to, there's different ways of doing this, but I'm going to sketch on, say, this front plane. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try hide that. What I want is to be able to select one of these edges here, like that one there. Again, P for project. And again, I want to turn that back on, like so. I'm just going to hide that USB. And I've got this sketch, this line here, which I'm going to use. We go to split body. Target is this body here. The tool I'm going to use is this line, which I've sort of traced from the circuit. And again, if you have that unticked, it's only going to sort of split it down there. And that's really not going to do what we want. It's only going to create sort of a part split. We want it to cut right through or split it right through. Click OK. And what I've got now is a top and bottom. So I'm going to rename that bottom. Okay, so it's good to rename things because once you start adding quite a lot of different bodies and components, it can get confusing. So if you name them, you know, you'll be able to use that to work out what you're hiding and showing. So there you go. So I've got a cat now and I turn on this component and it's there. So the reason that's sort of grayed out is, again, I'm only affecting this sort of main body. Uh, I could turn it all back on by coming up to the top and it's all active again.
So I was going to hide those. So again, that's quite good. So I've got a cap and I've got these two sort of halves, a top and a bottom. Like so. All right. So I'm just going to hide that again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create sort of a snap feature. And there's lots of ways of doing this, and there's simple ways and there's complex ways. I'm going to show you a very simple way of doing this. And that's going to use sort of pins. So I'm going to select this top surface and go to sketch. I'm going to spin it around actually to make life a bit easier. I'm going to use a center line. So press L for line, I'll go to the top line. Just going to draw that down there. And I'm going to put two pins on this side and then I'm going to mirror it so it's the same on the other side. So these pins, I'm going to draw using a C for circle or circle at the top. Probably get away maybe because of this design, maybe using three millimeters. I'm going to hover over here, three millimeters. If you want it a certain distance, you could use your center line to say, yeah, nine millimeters from the center. And you could dimension it from certain edges like that. So I'm using D for dimension and dimension two at the top. I could use different points. So I might use that point there and I might want that to say seven millimeters. Actually, maybe double click, maybe eight. So again, you could change all these numbers and it depends on your shape. So could it just come out of that? I'm use the mirror tool. So mirror sketch, select these two circles, the mirror line is that one there, and click OK. So if I change this top one, the bottom one will move as well. So I'll just change that back. There we go. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to solid and extrude. I'm going to select these circles, which are going to be pins. I'm going to drag them up. We don't want to go too crazy because uh, basically it might go through the top part and through its body. So we're going to go three millimeters like so. And we want it to join, we want it to merge into this body like that. I'm going to add a side chamfer. So I'm going to select these by holding control. I'm going to add a slight, let's have a look, not put two five. Yeah. A slight chamfer that's added a slight angle so when that pin goes into the hole it's going to little, leave a little gap around the bottom and that's going to make it slightly easier to take on or off okay and what we're going to do is turn the top on now the top at the moment if you turn that back on turn this off it's got no holes in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to subtract the bottom from the top so we'll go Combine, target body, so it's going to be the top one. Tool body, it's got the pins in it. And I want it to cut and I want it to keep the tool. Otherwise, if I add that and ticked, the bottom will disappear. We'll click OK. And if I hide that one there and spin it around, you see we've now got the pins and that slight angle in the bottom. So that's just a very quick way of adding the pins. And if we turn everything else on, so turn on this first so you can see, and then turn the lid on. And it, we've got a very simple design using a revolve. And I could go into this and add extra features. I might want to put a flat on the bottom so it, so it doesn't roll off the table. I could add a little fillets in between these edges. So again, there's lots of things you can add to this. And also, if you think, well, actually, I want to change the size of some of this. You can go back in down here and you go back to your original sketch and go edit sketch. And you could come in and go, well, actually, I want to make that slightly bigger, slightly smaller. However, you just got to be careful because when you start changing things earlier in the timeline, it will have an effect on some of the other features. So we go to that. So that hasn't really affected it that much because I always slightly changed it. OK. And what I've got there is a simple design using a revolve. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created 
using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.